Hi there, in this video I'm going to machine the split rod end bushing for the Jerry Howell Farm Boy Hit and Miss engine. Uh, this is otherwise known as uh, the big end bearing. Now my original plan was to uh, machine the split rod end bushing in the video when I made the con rod, um, but I didn't have time really. Uh, but I had split it in half, this piece of phosphor bronze. Now, um, I've had some advice uh, from Tim Joynson and what he suggested was your best bet to, when you're doing this is um, draw a line down the dead centre but then when you're cutting it with a slitting saw offset the saw so the right hand side is in line with the centre and that way you end up with a, a piece that's exactly half a, a circle. Uh, and then you can split that piece in half and join those two pieces together. Um, but obviously, you know, um, I, I can't really do that with this piece anymore. So um, I'm going to have to sort of join it together like that and then machine it. It's oval, but I've got plenty to work with. Now, I also uh, recently met with Peter Nichols for a, a few beers. And I was talking to him about, about this approach. And my original plan was to use super glue. And I was concerned that super glue actually might take up a few thou, uh, so that once it's cleaned off, um, then the hole isn't going to be uh, exactly uh, round. Now Peter's suggestion is to use some silver solder. Now I've only used silver solder once in the past, and it was a bit of a disaster as I recall. But anyway, he's taught me into it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, mix some flux up, uh, cover these faces, Join them together, uh, use some wire to keep them joined up, and then apply some heat and hopefully these two pieces will um, stick together with silver solder. So that's the plan. Well that took a bit of encouragement and I think the key thing is to make sure that you uh, heat the whole of the uh, metal really hot. Uh, but as, as you can see the capillary action there, it's run right through the join. Um, so that's quite encouraging. So I'll put it in the four jaw chuck and uh, face this end and uh, turn it round and then we can put it in the three jaw.
Well I must say this is quite encouraging because you can't actually see any join here where the silver solder is. So I'm really impressed with that. Now I've turned this outside diameter down to 0.7 of an inch which is what it should be and now I need to drill um, and ream up to 3 8 of an inch. So first of all I'll centre drill then I'll uh, probably uh, use a couple of drill bits to uh, get up to 23 64 and then I'll ream. So what do they say? Half the speed and twice the feed. So I'll try and explain what I've just done. I've used a parting tool just to mark out the sort of various key positions. Now this position here is where I'll finally part it off once I've completed all the other machining. And this edge here uh, defines the side which is, uh, let me see, the overall width is 0.54 of an inch between that edge and that edge. And the inside edges um, is 0.377 so between that and that is 0.377. So I need to remove all this material until I get down to an internal diameter or, or a diameter here of 0.561. Now I've gone down to 0.6 with the parting tool, 0.6 of an inch. Apart from the middle section, which I'm pretty sure I'm close to 0.561. So I'm going to use this parting, uh, this tool here, just to take away material until I get down to 0.561. And then I'll use the left hand tool to take away this portion here. So that's the plan. Well, slight change of plan. I can't get in with those tools, so I'm ending up using the parting tool. So I'll double check my dimensions, I'm not quite there, but uh, I'll calculate it quite accurately and use the dial on the end uh, to get it down to size. But I'll do that a bit off camera. Well I'm absolutely dumbfounded because um, the drawing here shows the join of the two halves and uh, the idea is that um, use a, a ball nose mill here to mill out a, a groove top and bottom and that is to allow the bolts to uh, pass through 
the sides and stop the bearing from uh, rotating. And also there's an oil hole to be drilled in there. But I'm dumbfounded because I've had a magnifying glass on this and I'm struggling to see the join, um, which is incredible, really. So I was going to take a bit of a guess. I thought I could see it, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it now. So I'll apply a bit of heat. I'll do it off camera and split it. And then once I've split it, I can then see clearly exactly where these uh, things need to be drilled. Well, I've completed the bearing and uh, I'm just running this reamer through by hand just to take off any high spots. Well, I must say I'm very happy with that. feels really good. But it's highlighted one problem. Dough. So I need to do some more work on this rear frame. So the little end is just a straightforward little bush that I made. Uh, nothing special about that at all. And once it's in place, I mean that's quite a nice tight fit. Um, you mill this top piece here, um, just to put this groove in. And uh, then you drill through an oil hole. And that oil hole sort of matches up with this oil hole here just like that that feels really good very happy with that. Well I really do not understand why this rear frame needs modification but anyway we'll uh, give it a bash. Okay, so now is the time to join the front frame with the rear frame. And um, what I've done is I've um, drilled and tapped uh, six holes, three on each side, um, to uh, I think the 2B56 UNC, and I've countersunk here. Um, so the instructions suggest using JB Weld. So what I'll do is I'll use a combination of JB Weld, um, push the pieces together, and then screw through um, with the countersink uh, screws to uh, secure it, leave it overnight and all being well, um, that'll, that'll be the job done. Well I thought I'd uh, do a bit of a test assembly based upon the components I've made so far. Um, I've not put a piston ring on because um, it does run a little bit tight with the ring uh, and I'm just wondering whether or not the uh, piston groove might need to be uh, opened up a little bit. Uh, but apart from that, it turns really well. P5 
piston coming to the bottom of the liner, which I guess is good. My slight modification there, I don't know why I had to do that because it was all the all to uh, the drawing specifications. Now one thing I'm a little bit confused about is uh, there's no mention in the drawings um, about drilling an oil hole um, for these bearings, which um, I would have thought it, it would need some uh, oilers there. Uh, if anybody's any sort of thoughts on that, I'd appreciate it. Um, but apart from that, very happy so far. Well, that was an interesting little exercise and uh, I'm really glad I had a go at silver soldering again. Um, I, th I think I've come to learn that um, you need to uh, put flux on sort of both faces and then get those faces pretty, pretty close together um, and then heat the whole thing up before trying to run the solder. Uh, but it, it sort of turned out okay in the end, so I'm really pleased I had a go at it. Um, and uh, I'm really happy with the way this is uh, coming together now. I mean, sometimes when you make individual components and start putting them together, you start encountering sort of like tight spots and all, all sorts of things like that. Um, the only problem I had was this, um, which goodness knows why I had to take some uh, metal out of that. But anyway, um, apart from that, uh, I've got a few queries though. I mean, one is um, the piston ring. Uh, the piston ring, if, if I fit it on the piston, uh, it does run a bit tight. I mean, the, the, the actual size of the ring is pretty close to the internal diameter of the uh, cylinder liner. So I'm guessing that maybe the groove in the piston might need to be opened up a little bit. Um, and the other sort of queries I've got, like I mentioned, oilers. Do I need oilers on these bearings? I would think so, uh, but the drawing doesn't show any. Um, also flywheels, uh, I looked on the internet uh, a few months ago looking for some uh, cast iron uh, flywheels that I could machine um, that are about six inches in diameter and I, I could only find one possible, uh, but obviously I need two. So I don't know what I'm going to do there, so if anybody's got any thoughts on that. Um, I mean I was thinking maybe getting a couple of um, cast iron blanks and machining from scratch but that's going to be a big job. Uh, but anyway, if anybody's any thoughts on that, I'd appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice so far. I've, I've received some fantastic tips recently, so I do appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, um, I hope you like the results so far, and I hope to see you later.